Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some romance books with chronic illness representation in them. We're going to continue content for Disability Pride Month. There's going to be a rec video for romance books with disabilities later on in the month so you can look forward to that. But Today, we're just gonna be talking about chronic illnesses. And I also wanted to make you aware of a live show that's going to be happening towards the end of the month that I am super excited for. Um, Hannah Bottom Young reached out to me and um, asked if I wanted to do a live with her. And I was like, of course, we're doing it, we're doing it. So um, on July 29th, we are going to be discussing Out on a Limb by Hannah Bottom Young. This book actually comes out tomorrow if you're watching this the day this video comes out. And it's my favorite book of the year. It's like probably my new favorite book of all time. I love it so much. I have to reread it to like solidify that, but like it's so stinking good. It's a book filled with disability representation, own voices, disability rap. It's a accidental surprise baby that is absolutely fantastic and beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful books I've ever read in my life. I love it so much. And so I will be joined by Zay from Woody Reads and Caitlin from The Love Librarian. And the three of us are going to be chatting with Hannah Bonham Young. We're going to be talking about her book, her writing process, asking her questions. So down below in the comments, leave me any questions that you have for the live show. If you have any questions for her or this book, Caitlin, Zay, and I have all read it already and we all three gave it five stars. So we're, we're very excited to talk to Hannah about this book. It is going to be amazing. It's going to be so fun. So be sure to join us on July 29th at 7 p.m. EST on my channel. I am so excited to chat with all of these ladies about like one of the best books I've ever read in my entire life. I love it so much. So be sure to read this book this month. Be sure to join us and read this book because it is absolutely fantastic. And then you can know more information too on my Instagram. I'm going to be announcing it on my Instagram as well. Anyways, let's get into these books with chronic illness representation in them. By the way, I do have a previous recommendation video with chronic illness rep um, I'll link it down below. I think I also talk about my journey and health with my chronic illness. Um, I do have a chronic illness YouTube channel that I have not posted on in, I want to say, close to a year. Um, just because I myself am kind of like in this remission stage of my illness where it's not as severe as it was last year. Last year was like the year of hell for me and my illness. Um, it's like the worst it's ever been, ever. And I'm kind of on that remission path and I, I'm really lost with what content to make on that channel when I'm in remission. So it's just like personal things, thinking like, well, how is anybody gonna watch you if you're in remission and what content am I gonna make? Anyway, um, so you can go check out that channel. It's always linked down below towards the bottom of the description. But anyways, let's get into these recommendations. I've been talking for too long about things that are not a part of this video. So the first book that I have is Love Flushed by Evie Mitchell. This is the romance between Annie and Link. They were actually like high school sweethearts. And this book takes place like later when they're all grown up and they don't get along. They apparently did not end their relationship on good terms. So this is a second chance romance. Through the whole book, when you're reading, you're trying to figure out like what happened to them. But Annie has Crohn's disease. So that's the representation in this book. Since Link and her last saw each other, she has developed this toilet paper company um, that is supposed to be like good for people who have to go to the bathroom a lot that need like good feeling toilet paper for people like her. The only issue is like, she's having trouble with her like paper supplier to make the toilet paper itself. Link sees this as a perfect opportunity for them to join up as business partners because Link and his brother just got like ownership of their family's paper factory. They have like no one to like make products for. So Annie and him team up very reluctantly. They like don't really get along, but Link is trying to like win her back. But Annie holds her own. She's a very stubborn woman. <laughs> there is some tension between the two of them. And I loved that part of the book. I loved the discussion of chronic illnesses in here. It was very relatable. Evie Mitchell does an amazing job with disability and chronic illness representation. So like if you want a very good author that has amazing rep, like just go read Evie Mitchell's backlist. The next book that I have is Undone by the Ex-Con by Talia Hibbert. This is the second book in her indie, one of the first indie series that she ever wrote. This is about Lizzie and Isaac. Okay, so Lizzie is a ballerina who just recently got diagnosed with type one diabetes and her whole life is like completely changed from that diagnosis and she decides to just change her life plans. Um, and now she becomes like a dance teacher to this very rich family who have, I think like two young daughters. And so she just becomes like, they're basically like 
at home dance teacher, but definitely not the path that she expected to go down like years ago. Like this diagnosis definitely changed her life in many ways. Her boss, the father of the little girls she teaches, ends up blackmailing her um, and is like, if you get close to this guy that works for me named Isaac, who's an ex-con, learn secrets about him and tell me, I won't leak these photos about your brother and like, I won't ruin your brother's life essentially. And so she has to get close to Isaac to save her brother, um, but then she ends up falling in love with him anyway. I loved the representation with type one diabetes. I know a few viewers of mine are really wanting to find representation like that in books. Cause that's not really like, that's not in a lot of books. So, well, disabilities and chronic illnesses themselves are not in a lot of books, but like for how apparent type one diabetes is in our world, um, like it's not in a lot of books. So um, I thought the representation here was done very well. And Lizzie's whole reaction to the diagnosis and her life changing because of it, I really related to her. One of my favorites is Finding Gene Kelly. I love this one so much. This is about Evie and Liam. Um, so they grew up as childhood friends um, and you get to like go back in time a little bit, like time jumps. Uh, get to glimpse what happened to them when they were younger like teenage age they ended up developing like feelings for each other but for whatever reason like evie is like really mad at liam because of something he did to her when they were in high school and she has not been a fan of him since like she does not like liam she thinks liam does not like her they do not get along her whole entire life evie has dreamed of opening up a bakery in paris and so for the past few years she has lived in paris to hopefully make that goal um her best friend ends up visiting her in paris but then brings Liam along and she's like, why is Liam here? Like, what is going on? Long story short, they have to get in this fake dating relationship, even though they do not get along really all that well. Um, but I love the banter in here. I love the caretaking. Evie in here has endometriosis. This book is own voices for endo. And the way that Liam cares for her is, oh, what I dream of in my future, future husband. Like I Liam so much. The representation with chronic illnesses in here, I adored. Um, it is own voices. You could feel that when you read this book, like it was done so phenomenally well. Shattered Sea by Katherine Cowles is another book with own voices representation. This is the fourth book in the Tattered and Torn series, but can definitely be read as a standalone. This is the romance between Lincoln and Bowden. Bowden in here is uh, trying to research for this upcoming movie he's gonna be a part of. And he ends up going and staying at this very small town called Wolf Gap in order to like do firsthand research about small towns. And then there's like certain rancher this character is gonna be based off of that he's gonna play. Like he's just in full research mode. So he's exploring the small town one day and he ends up across this beautiful gallery with some beautiful artwork in the front window and he is absolutely mesmerized by it. He goes into the art gallery, ends up meeting Lincoln, who is the manager of it. And they are like smitten with each other right from the get go. And so it's about like Bowden trying to woo Lakin essentially. The own voices rep in here is with Lakin. She has chronic pain. Um, she was in a car accident towards the end of high school with some of her friends and her boyfriend. Her boyfriend did not survive and Lakin was left with like sometimes debilitating chronic pain. There are so many highlights in this book, these tabs, that I absolutely related to Lincoln in so many ways dealing with chronic pain myself. Again, you can tell like how good the representation is because its own voices. Next, I have two Chloe Lee's books. If you want another book with type 1 diabetes rep, The Mistletoe Motive is one you should definitely pick up. This is a short holiday read. Our hero and heroine work at a bookstore. They don't really get along, but the bookstore is gonna kind of go under soon if they don't let some people go. And so the two of them get in this bet, if you will, to see who can sell as many books as possible, who can sell the most books to people before Christmas or by Christmas. And whoever doesn't sell the most books has to resign. This is a grumpy sunshine romance with autism representation and type one diabetes rep. Our heroine here is a type one diabetic. And I loved that rep. Another book with type one diabetes that I felt like was done really well. And then the other one is If Only You, which is Chloe Lisa's most recent release. Um, the latest book, book number six in the Berkman Brothers series. This is the romance between Sebastian and Ziggy. This is a fake friends to lovers romance. So Sebastian uh, is a hockey player on Ziggy's brother's hockey team. And um, they both need to like better their image. Sebastian just needs to look better in general. And then Ziggy wants to stop looking like the baby 
of her family. And so she's gonna befriend the uh, bad boy of the hockey team. <laughs> um, so they go on little outings together to be fake friends, but then they end up falling for each other. The representation in here, Ziggy is autistic. So there's that own voices representation and also own voices for celiac disease. I have celiac disease. And so I related to this book at certain points. And so Sebastian here is a newly diagnosed celiac. Um, I was diagnosed when I was seven. So like um, there are certain parts of this book I really related to like with um, like whole trying to find foods you could eat and everything and cooking and baking and everything like I really related to that. Um, but yeah, this has celiac disease representation and I really enjoy the representation here. It's probably like I've read a few books, I wanna say four books, three books that have celiac disease representation and this one is definitely the best one that I've read as a celiac myself. Another one with like tummy issues, <laughs> we have Isn't It Romantic by Lisa K. Adams. This is book number four in the Romance Book Club series. And I've only read book one in this series and then also this one, which is book four. So I like jumped. So I felt perfectly fine reading this. I didn't feel like I missed anything. Vlad is a hockey player who is from Russia originally, but he moved to America to play hockey. And he has been actually married the whole time he's been in America to Elena, who is his childhood best friend from Russia. She needed to get married to him in order to have like a student visa and um, like go to school in America. And this book starts out with uh, Vlad wanting to actually like have a real relationship with Elena, but Elena like beats him to it in this conversation and is like, I'm going back to Russia. But he wants to woo his wife again. Uh, but at the beginning of the book, he ends up getting like crushed really bad in a, a hockey game and Elena is there to help take care of him in his home. Um, Cause they didn't live together before they were married or even when they were married. So she's having to like move in with him for the first time ever and cook him meals and stay with him. And it is just really sweet too, because she wants to cook all of these like Russian foods that they grew up eating, um, but he eats gluten free now. And so she has to like find all these substitutes, which I really related to. Um, so the rep in here is uh, with Vlad and it never explicitly says like celiac in here. So I'm not gonna say this is celiac, um, but I think it's more IBS and a gluten intolerance. Like it's never explicitly like stated what is going on with him. Um, but as a celiac reading this book, I don't think he has celiac. He keeps saying gluten allergy, which celiac is not a gluten allergy. Um, so I think he has a gluten intolerance or, and or he has IBS. Um, so I really related to him with um, the tummy issues going on in here. I felt, I felt for this big hockey player. <laughs> Next I have Release by Claire Kent, which is a sci-fi romance. It's not like aliens. There's no alien creatures. Everyone in this book is like human, but it's on a different planet. Paul in here is our hero and he is doing like a secret mission on this like aristocratic royal planet. There he ends up meeting Kyla, um, but he's undercover to be the suitor to her sister, the queen. But when the two of them meet, like they cannot like leave each other alone. Like they are entranced by the other person, um, but he's having to like also court her sister, like secretly, like, like to show that he has affection for her sister as well. Um, so he has to like keep his relationship with Kyla like secret because he doesn't want his cover to be blown. Like his main purpose there is to get close to the queen and to do something, I'm not gonna tell you. And then also it could be like really bad if uh, Kyla's sister finds out that she's like, he's not there to actually like woo her. The representation in here is with Kyla, she has chronic migraines. And so I love that just little touch of representation in this short, book. Like it's not used as like a plot device or anything. It's like a, just a small part of this heroine's life that she has to deal with. So I really, really enjoy that representation. Next is Meet Me at the Anvil by Kate Pryor. I love this cover so much. I think it's so cute. This is about Diane and she is set up to marry this guy she has like no passion for. And instead she ends up falling in love with his best man. <laughs> this is a historical romance and so like there's no diagnosis for a lot of things that we get diagnosed with today but i firmly believe that diane has pots or something similar because she has like a chronic fainting issue she faints a lot um out of the blue out of nowhere when she stands up when she's in stressful situation she faints it's like i really felt for diane okay and she gets ridiculed a lot for it people make fun of her because they think she's just swooning or has like a low countenance or something like that and she's like no i cannot like control this at all um but anyway she ends up fainting like when she's at the altar marrying this man she has no passion for. And then her like fiance ends up making fun of her. And she's like, that's it. 
I'm done. I'm not marrying this dude. Like not gonna happen. So she ends up running away and the best man joins her. And he may not have feelings for Diane himself. Like I thought this was such a sweet, cute, very funny romance. I think there's even like a go in here that makes some shenanigans happen. And the last one that I wanna mention is When He Was Wicked by Julia Quinn, which is my favorite book, a part of the Bridgerton series. This is book number six. Um, this one is Francesca's book. At the beginning of this book, you read about Francesca, but she's already married. She's married to this guy, but you soon realize that her husband ends up passing away. And this is her romance with her deceased husband's cousin. He has been pining after Francesca for years. He's been keeping his distance from Francesca for years, even after he inherited his dead cousin's title because he just doesn't want to be tempted. He knows that like he would not be able to keep his hands off of this woman. So he's just going to distance himself. He doesn't want to ruin his cousin's good name. He doesn't want to make Francesca feel uncomfortable. So like he's just going to like distance himself. Um, but there comes a point years after her husband's passing when he comes back. To her and this is their forbidden romance they both think like they should not be having feelings for each other francesca doesn't believe it at all and she's really struggling with like can i say i've loved two men in my life like is that even possible there are trigger warnings in here i do want to make you aware of of miscarriage familial death infertility and grief like those are major points of this book. The chronic illness representation is actually with our hero. He got malaria when he was abroad. Um, and so that really affects him um, nowadays. Like it's still very much present in his day-to-day -day life. Um, and there's even days where like he cannot get out of bed because he is so ill. Um, I really related to him on that. I've been through that. I didn't even know that before going into the book, but it's one of the reasons why I really enjoyed it because I. I felt like like it just added more to Michael's character, the hero's character, um, and how sweet and caring Francesca was. Like she was full on there for him. Anyways, those are 10 romance books with chronic illness representation in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and what your recommendations are down below. Again, I have like a previous rec video where I have like more of the popular ones people know about down below um, if you want more recommendations. Um, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the goat emoji. Is there a goat emoji? Either a goat or a sheep, whatever there is, uh, down below in the comments. <laughs> Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in the next one. Bye y'all.